Hello, and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals and Heals. We're going to get real tactical today, ladies, and discuss how do you really overcome a objection around money and how to realize that most objections that you get, regardless of what they say, most likely nine times out of 10 really have to do with some type of logistical money issue. So we're going to go into that. All right. So in a sales conversation, before we go into uh, discussing what to say verbatim when a um, money objection comes, you have to understand what's happening in the conversation. When do you close a deal? Like when is a sale made? Because um, a big myth in sales is that sales are made at the end of the sale. Have you ever had a moment where you're in a sales conversation, you're talking to somebody like, things are going good and you get towards the end of the call and you start feeling your heart race just a little bit faster and you're asking to yourself, you're like, man, I really hope that I know what to say at the end of this call. I'm really hoping that it, like everything goes well. Oh God, it's coming. It's coming. I'm about to tell them the price. And then, oh my God, have you ever had that moment? happen. I've definitely had that moment happen many, many times in my career. In fact, I used to stutter and I would get all awkward and I would start talking about things that don't even make sense, using a lot of filler words in order for my conversation to slightly flow. And it would be really embarrassing for myself. It would be really frustrated because I want to make this sale and it would be really frustrated for my prospect. So why do people have objections? Like what is happening in order for somebody to have an objection and a call? And most likely, nine times out of 10, it's because you, the person that is selling this person, are doing something or saying something or being a certain way in order for the person, the prospect in front of you to feel sales resistance in their body, to feel some type of uncertainty in their body. Like something is happening where they feel slightly unsafe. Something is coming up for them. And the only way that you can create that resistance in this person's body is by your tonality, by your inability to remain in control, and, you know, by the type of questions that you're asking. See, basic salespeople, most salespeople, they ask surface level questions that don't really bring up an emotional pool that would allow somebody to really feel some type of pain or or feel, you know, what could happen, possibility or feel consequences in order for them to want to make a change today. And that is all sales is. Sales is change. And most humans don't like to change. Most people like to stay the same. And so your ability as a salesperson is to try to hold space for someone, remain in control, you know, use the right tonality, use pausing, use like real, like intense masterful skills and great questions in order to go underneath the surface for this person to realize problems that they may not already know that they had. So when does this come up? When does somebody say, oh, I don't know about the price? It's because you've probably asked a question that's surface level. Here's a good example of a question that you could be asking that might be surface level that I've been taught in old sales trainings. You know, hey, Sally, um, may I ask like, what is the biggest problems that you're experiencing in your business right now? What keeps you up at night thinking about like what issues keep you up late at night to where like it, it's hard for you to sleep? Like what makes you so frustrated that you feel like you can't handle it anymore? What biggest problem do you have? Do you experience? And the problem with these questions is that our brain is a survival mechanism and psychology. They call it a glycoma. Like it's like your brain tries to keep you safe. And if you've ever had a traumatic situation ever happened in your childhood and you can't remember it, it's because your brain has, and I don't know if I'm saying this right um, in regards to how it happens, but your brain puts up a glycoma or develops a glycoma in order for you not to remember that memory. It's like a space there trying to keep you safe. And so whenever you're asking intentional questions about pain and it's not delivered the right way, your brain doesn't go to the worst memory ever. Your brain doesn't like want to think about pain. Does that make sense? And so what I'm, what I'm wanting or what I'm doing when I'm like, what is the biggest problem? What keeps you up at night? Like 
their brain like doesn't want to think about the biggest problem. Or if it does think about a problem, it thinks about a surface level problem. And the problem with that is that if we go for surface level problems, or if we make these problems not personal to them, regardless if it's B2B, B2C, they're feeling problems and it's not personally affecting them. It's going to be hard for them to have an emotional desire or want to change. So what you can do instead, and the reason why this is important is because you ask these surface level questions, you're going to have tons of objections later. So, you know, what you can do here instead, instead of asking like, what is the biggest problem that you're experiencing right now? It, it could sound something like this. Let's say I was selling life insurance and um, the person I'm talking to has already has a policy in place, right? Um, and I'm trying to get them to switch to go to my policy, right? So I wouldn't be like, hey, what's the biggest problem with your policy right now? Um, I would ask something like this. Um, Sally, you know, may, may I ask like, do you, do you like um, the policy that you have in place right now? And this can go two ways. She could say, yes, I like it. Or she could say, no, I don't like it. And either way, you have somewhere to go. She's like, yeah, I like it. Okay, that's wonderful. And, and what what exactly, you know, do you, do you like about it? Why I like X, I like Y, I like Z. Okay, and, and Sally, would, would you change anything about that policy? Like, if you could, what am I doing here? My my tonality here, my pausing here, my my ability to disarm her is so important. You're always wanting to disarm her, make her feel safe, make her feel like I'm here, I'm on her team. If she feels like I'm trying to come in and sell her my policy over her policy, she's going to be in opposition to me. She's going to feel like I'm invading her space, like I don't understand her, like I'm trying to sell her, like I don't care about her. But when I say like, well, what do you like about it? And she's like, well, I like this and this. I'm like, oh, okay. And would you change anything about this policy if you could? It allows her brain to first think like, hey, I'm on the same side with you that you like it. Like we're good here. And then once I get past that part and I disarm her, I can ask, is there anything that you would want to change about this if you could? I'm going to go bounce around back into like what happens if they say no, but like, let me show you how this would also work at a good example. Let's say you have a girlfriend that's dating this guy and you don't really like the guy that she's dating. You're going to use the same principle here, right? Like what's the biggest problem with that guy, right? Service level, um, opposition, uh, contrasting, challenging. She's not going to like it. But if you're like, hey, you know, um, Sally, do, do you like Steve? And, and she's like, well, yeah, yeah, I really like him. Okay, yeah, amazing. And, and what is it that you like about him? Oh, I like that he's so strong. He's so big. He's so great. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Good kisser, whatever. And, and the second question, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I, I love that you have that. May, may I ask, like, would you change anything about Steve um, if you could? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that he needs to get a job. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Or, hey, like he drinks too much. Or, hey, you know, he's kind of mean to me. Oh, wow. In what way? Right? You see, like I'm I'm probing here. I'm, I'm clarifying what's going on. And I'm probing on issues that she may not even knew that she had. I'm bringing them to the surface here. I'm trying to have her emotionally feel how him doing that would impact her. Right. So if I, she's like, hey, I, you know, he he's a little rude when he drinks, you know, he's a, and he, yeah, he's a little rude when he drinks. Oh, okay. Um, does, does he drink often? Yeah. Yeah. He does. Hmm. So, so what you're saying is that he's rude often. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, and Sally, I'm like, D is that impacting you in any way? Well, yes, it is. How so? well, you know, I feel like, I don't know if like, we're really in love. Well, do you see how I'm going here? Do you see how like everything that I'm saying has a different part that I can go down and every single part has a different emotional like component that can attach to her. And if I go deep enough in this pain, there's not going to be bigger objections later because inside what I'm doing through my questioning, using NAPQ, using neuroemotional persuasion, questioning, by using these questions, it's going to make her feel internally disturbed, right? Which is why I always want to do this with integrity. I would never ask somebody questions and start like picking and probing like questions and making somebody think, right? Something bad when, when it shouldn't be thought that way if I can't help and fix it, 
right? So you always want to be in your integrity here when you're doing this. And I want her to come to the realization that this guy is a POS versus me telling her. And, and I like using dating and analogies for sales because I feel like it's really, really relevant for us. Let's go back into this insurance policy um, example, right? So we said, yes, what is it that you would like about it? She says, I like X, Y, Z. I said, well, is there anything that you would change about this policy if you could? Yeah, well, I, I just don't know if it's gonna be enough money, like if something does happen to me, because I, you know, I just had a new child and I wanna make sure it's not going to my three kids, but not going to my four kids. And I wanna make sure they don't have to worry about anything if I was to pass away. Right. I'm like, oh, okay. Now we found an issue now that we can like, and you know, if, if, you know, you didn't do something about that and, and whenever you do pass away and this would affect your four kids, do you feel like it says, it seems like you said that you wouldn't feel like it was enough. Yeah. I don't feel like it was enough. Well, how do you feel like that would impact your kids? Ooh. Right. So go down that path. Now let's say she says, no, I don't like the policy. Hey, Sally, um, do you, do you like the policy that's in place right now? No, Kayla, I don't. Mm. What, what do you not like about it though? And notice my tonality. Notice how I'm pausing. Notice how I'm, I'm like in there with her. I'm using verbal cues. I'm like, mm, ah, like, which I'm doing that because I want her to not feel just like I'm listening to her, but that I understand her. Everyone wants to feel understood. I'm being there with her. I'm in the moment. I'm like, I'm here. I understand you. I got it. I'm with you. Right. So in addition to this, what's going to happen when we go through this pain, when we go through problem finding, we really make them feel like the problem. We want to know how it's impacting them. I want to know how long it's been there, who else it's impacting. Has something happened recently for this to come up or is this like a long time coming thing? Is this, are you at a place where you possibly, you know, want to make a change? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I'm building up to this point and I'm going through all this, I'm going through all the layers. I'm trying to see what's there. I'm trying to see what's there. I'm in a state of curiosity is because if I go deep enough in the pain, which is where the sale is made, if I'm later on in the sales conversation and anything comes up for them, normally logistical issues and fear issues, right? Whatever is coming up for them, I can remind them of whatever we discussed earlier. If they're telling me, right, that logistically they can't do this. I'm here to remind them of every single reason as to why they should do it because of the pain that they're experiencing because of the internal comfort inside. So let's go over how to handle one of these money objections. Somebody says, hey, you know, like, I really appreciate this time with you today. It just like, uh, this is a lot of money. You know, this is a big decision. It's a lot of money and I just... I just don't think, you know, I'd be able to afford something like this. What am I going to do here? First of all, I'm not going to challenge this person, challenge how they're thinking, try to prove them wrong anyway, but I am going to try to disarm them, try to get them on the same side with me, acknowledgement here, listening, agreeing, like all important things. Sally, um, uh, thank you. I, I can appreciate that money could be an issue for you. I completely understand where you're coming from. May I ask, like, money aside, is this something that you would really, really want to do? Well, yes, it is. M may I ask why, though? Why am I asking that? Because I want her to tell me, but more importantly, herself, why she feels it would be this way. Okay. If she does not give me enough context here, if, if we went through this whole pain cycle and we talked about, you know, how her not having this policy could dramatically in affect the financial future of her kids, um, also could put them at a really, really bad financial place, um, along with the grief that they're going through, that they wouldn't be able to handle it. Maybe they would have to sell their home, right? And like, it would be a catastrophe over here if she doesn't have that in place. If she just tells me a few things and she's like, yeah, you know, like I really, when I'm asking her, why do you feel like this? Do you really want to do this though? And she says, yes. And I said, why though? And, and she goes, well, you know, I really feel like I need to make sure my kids are safe. If she gives me just a short little answer there, I want to remind her of all the things we talked about earlier. Yeah, Sally, you know, my concern is earlier that you talked to me, you told me 
that, you know, you might have to sell this house if you don't have something in place and that it would be devastating to your kids and, and that you're really wanting, you know, to make sure you have a policy in place so that you don't have to worry. Or I think you said stress about this at all. And you want your kids to know that you got them. Is, is that right? Yes, it is. What I'm doing here is I'm reminding her as to why we're doing this in the first place. She's telling me all the stuff as to why, right? I'm, I'm getting her mind to stop worrying about like the issues here. And I'm going to first try to solve this logistically. And then I'll go back into handling any fear. So from here, I'm going to be like, you know, if I could show you a way for us to, um, to fund this. Or if I could show you a couple of different options that might be in a more alignment with your budget, would, it, would this be something you want to move forward with? Depending on your industry, if, if we could split this in two or three payments, would that be um, more supportive for you? If, if I could show you how we can get financing for this, w- would that be supportive? Would that be helpful? Depending on your industry, of course. If I could show you how our other clients were able to pay for this, would that be helpful for you to know? There's so many things that you can do here, but logistically we want to handle things first, right? Yes, that would be helpful. Look, I can do this in this payment. We can do this, 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 all disgusting, like logistically how we can do this. If things are still coming up for her, then, you know, again, we want to go into fear. We want to go to to pain. Like, may I ask like what's coming up for you right now? This and this is coming up. We want to ask consequence questions. Like, like may I ask like, how are you going to protect your family and make sure you don't lose that house if you if you don't have a policy in place how would you be able to protect them then reminding her of consequences if she doesn't do this right people make decisions based out of fear and you know out of pleasure but mostly fear and pain right and and when it comes to big decisions right not all the time i'm just saying that a lot of times fear right? It can help get someone to move a lot faster than like winning something. And if they think about the fear of like, oh, this is scary. Oh, this is scary. More than the fear of like, hey, if they don't do something about this, like there's a huge consequence. You're going to be at a, at a disadvantage, right? So you can even ask like, what would be more risky? You know, you, you could not do anything today and, you know, heaven forbid something could possibly happen tomorrow, next week, your kids are not taken care of, you know, or what would be more risky, possibly getting this policy in place and paying for it every month, which might be a little uncomfortable, but you have that, the feeling knowing that your family's safe and that the house is taken care of. What's, what's more risky? And I just want their brain to think about a new thought. I want their brain to have a new belief system, uh, wanting change, wanting to fix the fear of if something was to happen. So I I think that this is really, really important too. In addition to just a money objection, any other objection that's given to you, I need to talk to my spouse. I need to think about it. I don't know if I have enough time. Like all those, instead of first just handling that objection, I suggest to you what it would be like if you handled a logistical money objection first. I really need to talk to my husband about this. Yeah, Sally, I'm with you. I think you should talk to your husband. May I ask, like, money aside, why is it that you really want to do this? Mm. Well, why, though? Ah, okay. I don't know if this would be helpful for you, but if I could put this in two payments, um, would that be a little bit more supportive? Ah, yes, it would. You know, sometimes we put in another objection or our brain is like, oh, I need to talk to this person or I need to do this thing first because it's easier than talking about money. So by going straight money first, it might be a little bit more helpful and more supportive for you. The biggest thing here is your tonality. You're pausing. Notice I'm not asking these questions in an assertive, forceful way. I'm kind of like taking a minute, putting intentional pauses and letting my words land, sink in. I feel like I'm in this like... um motherly loving voice i'm not talking up here which i can i have a great talking up here voice but no i'm in my heart space i'm like dropped in i'm synced in i'm present i'm here i'm in my this like hey i'm here to help you i'm here for us to be on the same team moving forward 
getting to where we want to go. Like, that's why I'm here, you know? And so with that setup in place, with that ability, you know, we have so much control over a sales process, right? It doesn't matter what this person says. Like when you know how to understand how people think and you know how to ask the right questions at the right time with the right tonality, like you will always be masterful in sales. You will always master it because regardless of what they say, you know what to do next. It's not an issue for you. You know what emotions are coming up for this person. You know how to drive those emotions into making a buying decision. When you don't know how to do that, you are, you know, shooting in the dark. You're guessing. And when you're guessing, there's a really good chance that you might be losing commissions and losing sales right through your fingertips. Not only are you losing money, but you're losing the opportunity to be able to help somebody help somebody with their life, help someone with their business, help somebody with anything. You're losing the opportunity to do business with people and really help make this world go around. So I hope that that is really helpful for you. Please make sure you're following us in our Facebook group. We have a really incredible free Facebook group called Women in Sales, right? So if you are a woman and you are in sales, please be part of that group. We have live trainings every single week, client interviews, as well as, you know, just uh, there's thousands of women in there that are like sharing their wins. We support each other, honor each other. It's really, really awesome. Um, and again, you know, make sure you are subscribed to this, you know, share it with somebody that, you know, um, I honor you for showing up today. Any comment that you leave, we really try to read them and go over them, answer any questions that you might have. And I think that we do have a upcoming masterclass on June 1st. So you get through that by going through our Facebook group again. Um, and that's really showing you how to use a sales script, right? Using the right scripting in a sales conversation in order to get the outcome that you want it's a process it's a it's a science right and if you don't have structure you're going to be feeling all over the place so i'm going to give you my sales script that i personally use um, to be able to help you it was able to help me get up to thirty five thousand dollars every single month in commissions and um you know you deserve to have that as well so i honor you i appreciate you you got this go use these tools and let me know how they helped see you soon